I'm behind Boyd. So Mrs. Good, could you move up, please? Let's join the elders. So this is on. Hello, hello. Come on in. I know, crazy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, we do. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. you're good. You have basic Let's all act like we like each other and sit together. Oh, why did the screen go off? I don't leave Patty. Oh, I know that was me. Come on now, don't leave Patty all by herself. The right is always right. Oh, stay here. That's stay my here. side. <laughs> all right, come on in, everybody. You have to sit up front. Up front, up front. Up front. <laughs> There's a backslide back there. We're going to let the books just sit back there. Oh. Watch it. <laughs> I just took another set down. Yeah, here we go. Probably be up here and work up here since All right, here we go. Please yeah, take your nose and turn to head number 338. Turn to head number 338, right? Please stand with us as we sing at Calvary. Chris, we're still having a baby, man. You're still having a baby. Oh, you're alive. Now I'll play the song in the harmonica, but I want to work for you. Alright, let's sing this. It's my turn. We have a baby yet. This should be good. We have a baby yet, so get down here and go back. Hopefully we'll have one. There you go. Uh, Amen. 25? I get a text, maybe not soon. Anyway. There you go. Tag team, right? Yeah, yeah. Alright, here we go. Yours has been a vanity of pride. Yours has been a vanity and pride. Caring not my Lord was crucified. Knowing God it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free.
Lord, thank you for this group that's back tonight. Give us a sweet time in your house in Christ's name. Amen. 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 All right. I think, uh, what are we doing next? That's it. Ties and offerings. Go ahead and ties. Ties and offerings. You can sit down. Although, usually when you're standing, you do a better job than God. So, guys, come on up. Let's take our evening offering. Gosh, why don't you pray for our offering tonight, please? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. Um, I pray that you bless the service and that you bless the software. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 He didn't shut you off.
want to turn on these spots that will get better lighting back there. Good? I want to do it. Open your Bibles to 796 in my Bible. That's uh, somewhere in your Bible. So, look uh, at Ezra. I want to thank everybody who helped clean up today and prepare and do all those things. I, I kind of bamboo the spot up here to run over to the hospital to see how Gary was doing. I should have stayed here and had more chicken. Man. But she wasn't doing much of anything. She was at four, and uh, a friend of hers brought her some, I don't know, it's some stuff to get the goats. <laughs> and uh, makes the goats go in the labor faster. And uh, she went from four to seven just like that. And the doctor said, what was that stuff? And uh, why don't you drink the whole bottle and we'll get this thing all done. So I'm, I'm hoping she doesn't want the other stuff to uh, uh, be chemical induced. So she's hoping to do this with, uh, with the goat of the so I'm not sure if the be. He will be born with those goat horns or what's going to happen. But At least Carrie knows how to get rid of them. I just think we can just do that. I uh, okay. appreciate everyone helped clean up and get things done. And, uh, that was greatly appreciated. Good service this morning. Uh, community service and all and whatnot. It's just good to be in the house, Lord. Amen. Our grandson is they want to be here, so they want to know, okay, how soon till mom has the baby? So the gamble is that Rebecca gets done, we get back to the report. Emily, Robert. Emily's four. Okay. I'm pushing the Emily, Robert, and I'm not getting very far. Okay. So uh, it's good. We're glad you're here this, this evening. And, uh, rather than doing a book of uh, Revelation tonight on the rapture, I'm going to save that one more week and uh, do a message tonight. This is our revival month. And uh, I think we saw this morning, God wants to revive us. Right. You know, the beauty is, I mentioned this morning, you know, if you're not saved, you have to worry about revival because it won't happen. You need life first. Right. And until you get life, then God can revive you and the blessings that God can do when He does that. So we're, we're in the book of Ezra tonight. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll get started. Lord, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for this gathering together with the people. And Lord, we pray tonight that as we open your precious word and look at it, we'll understand that uh, anytime we attempt to do anything for you, there will be great oppression and opposition. Lord, we thank you tonight. We praise you in Christ's name. And that opposition comes, you know, if you do it, I often tell folks, you know, if you don't feel like you're getting any opposition in your life, there's Nothing really going on through the devil or things like that. The odds are you're probably not doing much. You don't have to have any opposition if there's nothing to oppose. So let's take a look at this tonight. And I like this quote by Tozer. It simply says that one compromise here, another there, and soon that so-called Christian and the man of the world look exactly the same. Do that point to point. Yeah, they look the same. Here's what Satan wants to do first. To get you to compromise. You see, if he can get you to compromise your standards, compromise uh, where you stand on things, compromise what you do, he'll, he'll make sure you never actually get what God wants. This is the Bible. It's kind of plain and simple. We'll see that. Open your Bibles to Ezra chapter 4. Now, the history here, and I've preached on this before, uh, the book of Ezra, the book of Nehemiah, great books of the Bible, books that show us that here was the nation of Israel, and maybe this is what we need in America. Israel was taken into captivity because of their sin against God. God would allow that to happen for how many years? 70, that's right. 70 years they go into captivity. That means there were older people who left and died in Babylon and never came back. There were younger people who were born in Babylon. Remember, they heard the stories about Jerusalem, heard the stories of Israel. They never experienced it. Then in between was a group of folks. Maybe they were uh, in their uh, 30s or 40s or whatever. And, and now they're getting ready to head back. They remember what it was like. You know, I sometimes get uh, old with you. And I remember uh, the 60s. Remember the 70s, not the 60s. I really wasn't. 
a good church at the time, but I remember the 70s, the late 70s, and mid 70s revival. I mean, churches were packed, and, and, and guys who couldn't preach their way out of a wet paper bag were filling churches because of church, America was on fire for the Lord. You still had that generation, the great generation, that was still there, still in church, still preaching the word, still standing strong, still standing separated from the world. Along came the, uh, the baby boomers, and of course, we began to change that in the 60s as we began to come of age, and uh, we had the God is Dead movement, uh, it was free love, any place you want to, and with anyone you wanted to, and the rock music came in, and, and everything just seemed to, to go sideways, and for a while that, that lasted, but soon the, the great generation began to die off, those pastors went away, and all of a sudden it became a compromise America, more so than they have ever been before. And Satan brought opposition. What he simply brought before us, so let me go back. So here they are, they're in, they're, they're in Babylon, and they're excited to go back. Think about yourself, Christian. I, you're the, you're the, the sold-out Christians here today for the Lord. Listen. What if you weren't allowed to go to church for the next 30 years? You couldn't, couldn't have a Bible. They didn't have Bibles back then. Uh, you had to maybe go to someone. Maybe someone had a tem- uh, uh, an Old Testament, somebody brought one or whatever. But uh, for 10 or 20 years, you weren't able to. I don't know about you. I don't know what I do. I don't know what I do. And, and here they are. They get to come back, and the devil understands that. So he's going to make things as tough as he can as they come back. So look at Ezra chapter 4, <coughs> verses 1 through 3. And when the adversaries, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of captivity building the temple unto the Lord God of Israel. I like that. Judah was what more? First one? Right. Benjamin was the last one. So from one to the other, they heard that the, that the children of the captivity built the temple unto the Lord God of Israel. And they came to Zerubbabel, and to the chief of the fathers, and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as, as ye do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of, of Esau, es, Esau had him, king of Esau, which brought with us up hither. And Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. These were others. These, these weren't saved people who wanted to come or, 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 or people that were really trusting in God. They were, they were coming along when come off for a ride. I remember working with a gentleman once. He said, I really enjoyed going to Baptist churches because he liked the show that was put on. I said, really? I said, what show? He said, oh, no, no. A guy standing up there for 45 minutes and preaching about the Bible and preaching about this and preaching about that. I said, that's not a show, that's truth. Amen. And one day you're going to stand before God because you've heard the truth. Right. And you're going to stand before God in heaven and you're going to say, I didn't know, I was religious. And God's going to say, you heard the truth and you rejected it. Right. He made fun of it. He thought it was something else. So what Satan does, he attacks via compromise. He, he does it very well. And he did the time of, of, of Judah's return back to Israel. Let's, let's, let's send some other folks in to help you do this thing. And maybe not quite the, the children of God they should be. Look, at, you need to be careful in your life who you hang around with. You need to be careful who your friends are. You need to be careful who you trust in. Because the devil will use anybody to get you to compromise your faith. Right. If the bait is lost, slander becomes the tool of the loser. Right. We see that in verses 4 and 5 of the same text. When the it says, then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. 
all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even after the reign of Darius, king of Persia, took over. Look, he talks about this time, and here we are. You understand this? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. And when the debate is lost, okay, when they can't win, what they'll do is they begin to slander you. And they're doing it in a lot of different ways. You don't really believe that stuff, do you? Yeah. I had dinner with a gentleman this last week. We had a meeting. Uh, I had a class reunion coming, a high school class reunion coming up. I think it was on a 10th, I believe, something like that. And um, anyway, I mentioned, he talked about, I guess it's a very good science uh, museum in, in Ann Arbor. And that's all well and good. The problem with science centers is they promote billions and billions of years. I said, you know, you have to take this drive down to Cincinnati and go down to the uh, Creation Museum. First words out of the way. I can get it. Those are just people who take the, the facts and make them twist and twist them into their what they want to hear. Yeah. My response back was, well, what do you think you guys do? Right. We have the same evidence. The same evidence is there, and, and, and our evidence is stronger than the, the, the use of our evidence is better than yours because we have someone who was there who saw it. Right. And we got a book written about what happened. What do you got? Billions of years, billions of years, there's going to be trillions of years. Is we, we keep finding new evidence. How do you find new evidence that's billions of years old? I can't find my contacts at the time. Let alone something that's billions of years old. Where do you find it? What we do is we they, they, they take what something has been dated this age, and that becomes the new start. So now they date back from here, and they keep doing this thing. And it gets an old. The whole idea is this. Our, the problem is between science and the Bible. It's between evolution and the Bible. Right. right. And the evolutionists don't like what they hear. Right. So what they'll do is they begin to slander you. You know, Ken Ham has done a great job down here. I don't agree with all things that Ken Ham has done. I wish he used a different Bible, but uh, I like him from a scientific standpoint. He's worked hard. But I want to tell you, they've had opposition down there. They've had people try to close them down. In fact, this man said, I thought they went bankrupt. I said, I don't know where you got that room, but they're doing good down there. You know, the art project, all those things, they close them down. They don't want, they don't want the truth. Listen, understand something. You're going to get slain. The closer you draw to the Lord, the more people are going to find something wrong with you that they can talk about. But what we like the children of Israel, slander didn't bother them. Remember the old thing, growing up, sticks and stones, and break my bones, and you know, words that never hurt me? But isn't that how it went? Yeah. Something like that? Okay, I don't think they still allowed to use that today in our new society or not, but, but that's what we have. <laughs> this world can't win. Let's start bringing up accusations against you. By the way, as I say that, there's a whole lot of folks. There's a, uh, a preacher this week. He's here in Michigan. And he's got something going about 9 11 and uh, hating every, I don't call every Muslim, hating every Arab, I guess. I don't know. You understand all Arabs aren't Muslims. Right. right. right? All Americans aren't Christians. Right. right? All Spanish aren't Catholic. I mean, I uh, understand that, though. You know, they're not. There's a bunch of radicals, folks, who did what they did. And we have a bigger problem today with uh, some, some, some white males, if you want to call them that, shooting people up, right? Dad doesn't know nationality. It doesn't know color of skin. It doesn't know any of those things. Right. But I tell you what, when we start slandering people like that, it doesn't help our cause. I think we should speak the truth against what they're doing. I will speak the truth against Allah being our God, because he isn't. I'll speak the truth about grace being the way to salvation, and not works. I'll speak the truth when a, when a church is using wrong means to do what they do. But listen, folks, slander doesn't really help anybody, does it? It's a tool of the devil. So we see, here it is. Now they, they, they go to Candius. Uh, this is a house service that we read before. And we come along here, and here's the accusation that they go to Candius and write letters of accusation. Look at chapter 4, verses 6 to 16. Interesting this week, I, I put a, a thing out there on uh, my 
daily uplift, which isn't actually daily, but it's an uplift. I hope, I hope some of you watch it, get something out of it. But uh, when I read that about Drew Brees, that quarterback, and, and how uh, he was okay playing quarterback, he's a nice guy, he's an okay quote in scripture, but when you take a stand for what you believe, he just crossed the line. And he crossed the line with folks. I want to tell you something. He did a good job. Look at verse 6. So the rain, they bring everybody up against you. And they, in the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. And the days of Artaxerxes wrote Bishop, uh, Mithridah, Tabiel, and the rest of their companions unto Artaxerxes, king of Persia, and the writing of the letter was written in the Syrian tongue and interpreted in the Syrian tongue. Rehum and the chancellor and, and Shimshai, the scribe, wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Artaxerxes, the king of this story. Then wrote Rehum the chancellor unto Shimshai, the scribe, and the rest of their companions, the the, the whole lot of the hard words, and they're not down to verse 10, and the rest of the nations who the great and noble uh, uh, Asnathur brought, brought over and set the cities of Samaria, and the rest that are on this side, the river, and at such a time. This is a copy of the letter that they sent unto him, even unto Artaxerxes the king. Here's what they said, thy servants, the men on this side of the river, and at such a time, be it known unto the king that the Jews which came up from thee to us are come unto Jerusalem, building the rebellious and the bad city, and have set up the walls thereof and joined the foundations. Be it known now unto the king that if this city be built and the walls set up again, then will they not pay toll, tribute, and custom? And so thou shalt endamage the revenue of the kings. They always go towards money, don't they? Now, because we have maintenance from the king's palace, it was not need for us to see the king's dishonor. Therefore, have we sent and certified the king that search may be made in the book of the records of the fathers, so shalt thou find in the book of the records, and know that this city is a rebellious city and hurtful unto kings and provinces, that they have moved sedition within the same of old time, for which cause was this city destroyed. We certify the king that if this city be built again, and the walls thereof set up by this means, thou shalt have no portion on this side of the river. What they're doing is they're trying to use a scare tactic, fear technique. You know, it's the same thing about the, the Christian faith, you know, they, they talk about not bringing God into school, can't read your Bible, can't do this, can't do that, can't do these things. You know, those are scare tactics that they use on people. They use it on your kids. They use it at work. Do you know you can have a Bible at work? You can stop you from having a Bible at work. Read it on your lunch break if you want to. You know, don't read it, right? You know, when something's going on at work, you're supposed to be working, you work. But if you've got a break, you've got some time, you want to look at your Bible, you can do that. Stop you from doing that. The witness to people, you do it in the right way. You know, I remember uh, Mike Melcher talked about a guy who used to basically stop the assembly line to sit there and witness to people. That's wrong. You know, there's time. There's time to have opportunity. By the way, I find the best times to witness when I was working in the world was just to be talking to me and talk about a message I heard that I thought was really good and trying to plant a seed to get them to start asking questions. That's the best way to witness. Get them to ask you questions. You know, something like, well, hey, how was your Sunday? No, oh, not much. We didn't do much. Always. How was yours? Oh, I was great. You know, we went to church and uh, we had the Lord's Supper and fellowship after and the preacher preached the message on revival and the fact that revival is only for people who are spiritually alive and not spiritually dead. And stop. What do you mean spiritually dead? I mean, how, anybody had that happen? I can't tell how many times it's had happen. People just, you you can get them, you know, it's like going fishing, folks. Right? right? Throw the hook out there and a little worm and they'll come flying for it. And 
I can talk to him. He can do those things. But uh, we understand from, from 528 to 521 that Cambius stopped the building of the temple. Look at chapter 4, verse 17. Then said the king and, and answer unto Rehu, the chancellor, and unto Shimshai, the scribe, and to the rest of their companions that dwell in Samaria, and unto the rest beyond the river, peace at, at such a time. The letter which he sent unto us hath been plainly read before me. And I commanded, and search hath been made, and it is found that this city of old time hath made insurrection against the kings, and that rebellion and sedition have been made therein. There have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem, which have ruled over all countries uh, beyond the river, and told tribute and custom was not was paid unto them. Give me now commandment to cause these men to cease, and that this city be not built until another commandment shall be given for me. Take heed now that ye fail not to do this. Why should damage grow in the hurt of the kings? Now the copy of, the, uh, of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehum and Shemshai, the scribe, and their companions. They went up uh, in haste to Jerusalem unto uh, the Jews and made them to cease by force and power. Then cease the work of the house of God, which is at Jerusalem, so it ceased unto the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. You know, sometimes it seems like the devil's winning. Sometimes it seems like the devil's winning in your life. Maybe some people have talked and they, they silenced you and you've been, you've been put down for your belief or whatever it is and, and you stop. This world is trying to do everything it can do to stop Christianity. Yeah. To stop it dead in its tracks. Now, I believe the, the, the best way of doing it now is simply by promoting every other religion that's out there. Because what you do is you water down Christianity. You water down what we believe in, and, and you don't water down what we have, you water down what they have. I got a little chart up here, and uh, God will always prevail on it. Look at Ezra chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. And the prophets, hey guy, the prophet Zechariah, and the son, the, the son of Idu prophesies unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of God of Israel, even unto them. Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Shealiel, and Jeshua, the son of Josiah, Joseph, jo, Josephat, Josephat, and began to build the house of God, which is at Jerusalem, and with them were the prophets of God helping them. And at the same time came to them Tetnai, governor of the side of the river, and Shetharbaz, Nai, and their companions, and said, Thus unto them, Who hath commanded you to build this house and to make up this wall? And said we unto them after this manner, What are the names of the men that make this building? Now they're going to go after individuals. You know, God sends his his preachers. He sends his people. God uses others. We see that in, in chapter 6 and verse 12. At the heart of Haggai and Zechariah, by the way, you can, you can read about them in, in, in the Bible and those books, was a heart that was to build that temple, to build the work of the Lord. And I came the heart, and this is why, listen, what the devil will try to do is stop revival by stopping the heart of the people towards building the house. Our building is built. There's a building here. But the building is more than just a building. It's the people, isn't it? Right. There's still more room to build. I look, I see a few seats that are here. Right. I think there's more people to go to build. But if we're feeling opposition, and opposition can come from all sides. It can come from family. It can come from work. The devil will use anything he can do. It can come from within ourselves. That I can't do that. But the Bible says greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. We don't have we don't have can do in our dictionary. It's not there. I can do it. If I apply myself, I can do it. I believe I could even work on electricity if I applied myself hard enough. You might not want to turn on the switch, 
but I think I can do it. Understand something today. Opposition is there. Opposition will stop you. The devil really loves us. Is keeping the people away from the house of God. They're, they're fighting here to, to, to build the house of God. And we saw it in, in, in Ezra. Look over to Ezra chapter 6 and verses 1 through 12. Then Darius, the king, made the decree. A search was made in the house of the rolls where the treasures were laid out in Babylon. And there was found at Achmethah, in the palace that is in the province of the Medes, a roll, and there it was a record thus written. In the first year of Cyrus, I love the whole story of Cyrus. You know, Cyrus was named Cyrus 180 years before he became Cyrus. The Bible prophesies that King Cyrus would come and set the people free. 180 years or these are things you got to know in your Bible, folks, because the world will just stare at you. You see, most folks think this is so one person kind of sat down and, and just wrote the whole book and went back and researched and wrote the next book to write the next book. They're so ignorant of how the Bible was written. You need to educate them. Show them how the only one who could write this book was God himself taking it from beginning to end. So it says, the first year of Cyrus, the, the king, the same Cyrus, the king made a decree concerning the house of God in Jerusalem. Let the house be builded, the place where they offered sacrifices, and let the foundations thereof be strongly laid, the height thereof three score cubits, and the breadth thereof three score cubits, with three rows of great stones. And he goes through and speaks to them about how to do it. In fact, if you walk all the way through it, not only tell them how to do it, he sent laborers to help them do it and had people give money to do it. Amen. You know, sometimes in this, this area of Christianity, I think back to the first church. And the church grew by leaps and bounds through those first couple of centuries. And then along came a lot of opposition and, and the, the church ran into problems. And the church began to diminish in Asia Minor, many of the churches closed. But then along came more, and, and, and Christianity began to grow again. It's that ebb and flow. It's like the, the ocean, a high tide and a low tide, right? And sometimes we can be in a period of low tide, but you know what you don't do? You don't give up and quit. Amen. I'm glad those that, that were under great opposition in the, in the two millennia before this one didn't give up, they didn't quit they kept preaching the word, they kept teaching the gospel, they kept witnessing the people, they stood up against uh, opposition and oppression they stood by what was right, they were persecuted, they were they were, they were they, uh, uh, martyrs, but they stayed strong maybe today in America what we have is a martyr church the church, the true believers must stand strong as, as God weeds out those who are, are, are false believers. And once again, if he tarries his coming, if, if once again, maybe he'll build the church again here in our church. We have to stay strong. These folks stayed strong. Those that had to cease building, they were ready to build again. God brings along uh, this man, Darius, and Darius gives a command, look at start building. And through this, he, he gives it. And, and look at verse 12. It says, God, And the God that hath caused his name to dwell there, destroy all kings and people that shall put to their hand to altar and to destroy the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. I, Darius, have made a decree to let it be done with speed. Yeah, I know some folks, there are some folks, I understand, that probably don't like our current president. Okay? Or something didn't like the past president. But I know this. That there's a man in there that's fighting part of our battle for us. Amen. I want to see abortion overturned in this country. Amen. Amen. And we've got two judges, and I'm praying somehow, some way, we can get that third judge. And we'll have men in there with guts. We'll stand up and say, you know something? Abortion is wrong. Right. But what about the rights of the woman? She had rights before she decided to engage in sex and have a baby. Right? right? That's how it is, you know? The 
drunk goes against drunk, what about his rights? Well, he had rights before he got drunk. Before we commit the sin, we need to understand the consequences of that sin. 70 million babies. And I believe God says he's got a door for us that, that we ought to take advantage of. God sent to them Darius. Darius would make sure things were done right. Just a, a quick overview. In Zechariah's time, I kind of put it up here. It's 520 B.C. and Haggai's first sermon. You can go read that. We see that in Ezra chapter 5, verse 1. Uh, we move along. It's now September 21st. The temple building is resumed. Building starts under the command of Darius. The opposition that was there. Understand, God is greater than any opposition that comes at you. He has a strength to deal with it, to put it down. He used Darius. He said, if anybody comes up against the building of that temple, they will be taken down. We have got the Holy Spirit living inside. What could this world possibly do? The worst they could do is take your life, and God has to allow it. Go read the book of Job. As has not considered my, my servant Job. You know, basically, he's, he's already serving you because things are so good. You take it all away, and he'll curse you. God said, you can do whatever you want, but don't take, you can't take his life. See, God controls life and death. Yeah. And God would use Job. They say the oldest book in the Bible from the time it was written today. For all of us, thousands of years later, I understand that God is in control. Did Job curse God? Job got upset. Job didn't understand. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Wouldn't I? Yeah. His wife tried to get him to curse God. Right? This curse God and die. By the way, we get we get we get bad with this is Job. Understand something. She lost her possessions. She lost her children too. Right? We need to be careful a little bit. We don't make her the bad person in this. She probably saw her husband suffering and said, Job, just 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 die. Rather than going for what you're going to We keep going here. Here's October, uh, Haggai's second sermon. Again, the book of Haggai, so you can see that. Uh, Zechariah's ministry begins here. Understand this, that uh, uh, by the time we get to Ezra chapter 6, the temple is going to be dedicated. Never have stopped back in chapter 4. But God's work won't cease, folks. The key is, do you want to be part of God's work? But God brings revival. Don't you want to be there on the cutting edge of God brings revival to our church, to Ypsilanti, to America, in your life? Don't you want to be right there, ready? I do. We see this, and uh, one should never underestimate what a single individual in a right relationship with God can accomplish. We look at a prophecy, and we, we look at some of the, the men of old, the men like D.L. Moody and Charles Hank Spurgeon and uh, John Kyle's and Roy Thompson's and you go back into time and, and, and you can see men like William Carey and, and Ed and I and Judson and others, great missionaries. You can read their stories and read about what they did. I think of William Carey. One man stood up against all of England, against the church that was there. They, wanted, they didn't want to go to China. It's a waste of time to go to China. It'll cost us money to go to China. No use going there. And Carrie said, I'm going. And he brought Christianity to the Far East. And it's still there today. If you think you're just one person, you change that around. I do not work with. And if you ever use the word just, well, I'm just a salesman. Or I'm just a whatever. He would take you up one side and down the other. He said, what do you mean you're just? You are. And that's what you are. And that's what you want to do best. I mean, God could have been a preacher who had been saved. Yeah. You know? You are what you are. And, and you'd be the best at what you are. Now, it's funny. I walk around that building sometimes. And, man, the janitors are being the best. Like custodians or whatever they call them now, uh, engineers or whatever, but whatever they call them, you know, they were doing the best they could do. They were, they were doing everything. I don't care where you're working, where you're at right now, you'd be the best you can. If you're a mom, you'd be the best mom. If you're a dad, you'd be the best dad. If you're a grandparent, you'd be the best grandparent. And, and, and you do what you're doing. If you're a child, you'd be the best child. 
You're working to do your best. You watch what God can do to a person who is totally sold out to the Lord. He doesn't need millions of people, and he's one sold out for him. And watch as revival fires start. You know, the fires in California usually start by one person or one lightning storm, not by a group of people. Well, God to use you to start the fires. Never underestimate what God can do to the end. It's 516. The temple is completed. Darius, Darius makes Aramaic the official language that would now be used uh, by the Jews here in Israel. See, when revival meets opposition, folks, revival wins. Great. June of 535, the work of the temple began. The children, the grandchildren, and those taken into captivity sought to do it right, and they sought revival. They sought God to do something, and God did it. The whole timeline, as we, we laid it out here, is God will, I'm not going to go into all this, but you got to write this down. you got to look it up. This is God's timeline. This is what God did. I hear folks, you know, one of the opposition to God's word is, is there's so many errors. Why don't you challenge them? Say, why don't you show me one? Show me one. If they do, you don't have an answer for it. Give the priest your call. I'll, I'll do some research. I'll get the answer to that. There's no errors in that book. There's things we haven't discovered yet. There's no errors. We go through it. They've uncovered the, the area where a, a, a item to King David had. So King David never existed. Guess what? Now he does. Yeah. They used to say Jesus never existed. Now you're considered, considered pretty ignorant if you actually believe that Jesus never existed by the secular crowd. They can't deny his existence. You just let God prove it, folks. You let revival take place. July 18, 5, 586. There we go. Jerusalem, the first temple destroyed, remained in Hebrews, were taken into captivity. Things will change. Look over to in chapter uh, 7 through 10. We'll take the time to read it tonight. Even. Uh, very good. I want you to look at. Uh, oh, we'll just go from here. Here's what we need to do. I, I challenge you to go home tonight and read Ezra chapter 7. When God starts revival, folks, you got to keep it going. When the Great Awakening occurred in America, Jonathan Edwards was used by God and preached that a few weeks ago. The Great Awakening only lasted two years, which is a long time. You know, we used to have revival meetings in churches. I remember those. They'd last a week. Before that, they used to last two or three weeks. Right. Now it's hard to get a weekend to get people to commit to two extra days to see what God could do and start a revival. Do you think we need revival in America? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think something might be wrong. You know, we do a lot of comparing to just yesterday. We need to go back and see where we were and see what we need to do. A group of men left Massachusetts and went down to the Carolinas and began building churches. They go to a holler, go 50 miles, go to another holler. They went all the way across the Carolinas, all the way across to Missouri, building churches. And we know that today is what? What's that called? It's called the Bible Belt. All because Jonathan Edwards stood in a pulpit and read his message, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. It sparked the fires of revival in America. And things began to change. Bars closed. Houses of no repute shut down. The world lost a lot of money. Because people came to know the true Christ. It took a lot of guts by Jonathan Edwards to preach that message. But he did it. And God brought me life. I don't think God's done with America, folks. I think there's still time for God to bring America. And I'm going to tell you this, and I'll close on this tonight. Don't let the fire burn. I gave the illustration of the name of the fireplace and the coal. Stay strong. Stay true. 
Joshua said his last message, choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you have to make decisions. I'll be honest with you tonight, there's a place I'd rather be right now. Yeah. But I have a message to church. Amen. I'll be back. We'll have time. We'll get back there. You know something? Don't be a baby, I hope. Right? That's what God does. Okay? We don't have anything to do with bringing a baby. I think the most overpaid person in the world is an obstetrician. What in the world do they do? Push, push. They're not even there. There's nurses going. If somebody else comes to court, the doctor gets 10 grand. I don't, I don't care, okay? But just listen to them. When God starts a fire, don't let it go out. Get closer to the Lord. Get more into your Bible. Get more on your knees to pray. Get into churches as you do all the time. I appreciate the choir here. Get in there. Hear the messages. Fall under the authority of God. And let the Word yes, build that fire. Yep. And get a blaze going. Yes. You know, I find, there's a funny thing about fires. I remember, and I'll, I'll close with this illustration, I promise. <laughs> Up on Wayne Road, years ago, there was a big old barn. A huge barn. And uh, it was just up Glenwood, just a little bit north of Glenwood, and, and we just lived down the street. And, and I remember going outside one day, and I'm going to tell you, the whole sky was nothing but smoke. You could even see flames laughing up above some of the houses that were there. So what did I do? I just went back inside and watched the Flintstones, right? I got on my bicycle, and I rode my bicycle because I wanted to see where the smoke and the flames were. Right? I want to tell you something. When you start seeing the smoke and flames in your life, and you're on fire for the Lord, people are going to want to know, what is it that you have? Why are you so excited about life, especially in this current generation, in this current culture? Let's let God see a fire in our life. Amen? Amen. 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 Michelle, if you'll come stand, that's God, I suppose. Maybe tonight you'll just come and pray for revival. Maybe not just for you, but for our church, for our community, for our country. Come and say, Lord, start a revival. Prophet Isaiah, after he had seen, in Isaiah chapter 6, he had seen heaven. Fell on his knees and said, Hear my Lord, send me. I mentioned this morning we need another view of God, our holy God, our just God, our righteous God, our God on high. Get a better view. Say, Lord, start a revival in me. Help me be the one that begins the revival. Help me be the one that you use. Father, we come before you now and pray that you bless this time as we gather. Lord, for those who need to come and pray, just want to come and pray tonight that they'll come and pray. Lord, we yearn for revival. We desire revival. May our lives be separated, Lord, that we'll have the desires of our heart met that you indeed will sin revival. Bless this time of invitation. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. Amen. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. I'm the potter. Yeah. You're the clay. I'm the clay. You're the potter. The mold in the main. You're here tonight, Miss Hart. Make sure that there's a time in your life to put your faith and trust in Christ. If there hasn't been, why don't you come on up here? Huh? So I can talk to you about your story. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. What a shame. Some people attend lives, church, attend church, attend church, never put their faith and trust in Christ. They die stand before God and say,
thank you for being here tonight. She actually can pray for Carrie as she uh, goes through this tour. We pray for Emily. What is, what's Emily's middle name? Robert. 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 I wish. Huh? Grace. That's good, Timothy. Robert. Right? Take it down. Amazing, amazing grace. So, thank you all. Have a good day at God's house. And, uh, thank you for being here. Wednesday, 9-11. Uh, uh, I'm not going to bring a message on 9-11. But I will bring a message on 9-11. Uh, yeah. You just pray, listen, folks. It's a day we ought to remember. Yeah. We'll make a few thoughts about it that day. It's a day we ought to remember. I don't know about you, I felt that day like God's hand came off of her. I'll share a little bit more on Christmas. Father, thank you for this night. The blessing that you watch Carol is a great honor to be with uh, Carrie, be with little Emily, Lord, she's born tonight. Thank you for each one here and for praying. Lord, that are faithful. Lord, just bless in their lives this week. May we go out this world this week. Lord, may they see a little smoke. May they see a little fire. May they see someone desiring to live in God. To bring others to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.